Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 177 of Ask Vidas and Usha podcast. This question was sent by Mark. He writes, Hi Vidas, I have a very quick question. Does one need to fill out the harmonies in Baroque organ two-part works, melody and bass? Uh, is this a practice that was expected at the time, especially with Italian and English organ music? Thank you for an amazing blog. Best regards, Mark. Uh, do you know what he's talking about? Well, I'm not quite sure if he means Slabicinium technique or... or... Choral harmonizations. Choral harmonization, like in Krepsis. Yes. So there are two parts of two types of um, two voice texture, right? Uh, if you have a bicinium, uh, maybe let's say choral prelude where the right hand plays the melody and the left hand plays the accompaniment. But this accompaniment is rather uh, fast and uh, with figuration, uh, arpeggios and leaps and scales. Uh, then I don't think it's appropriate to add the uh, alto and tenor. I think so too, because, you know, sometimes two voices are plenty. For example, two-part inventions yeah. and some 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 dance suites. That's because um, when you have a very thin texture, like one voice or even two-part texture, then composer tends to create or fill in the harmonies uh, with these two parts only. So uh, he needs to basically make uh, a lot of arpeggios and produce um, imitation of the chords. True. Right? And think about, for example, string instruments like cello. He has so many nice, you know, suites written by Bach where it's only one voice and it fills out, you know, space completely. So the rule is the more voices you have, the less movement between the voices you can uh, supply. Basically, if you have, let's say, six-part choral prelude with uh, right hand playing two parts, left hand playing two parts, and two parts in the pedals, can you have a very fast-moving independent motion? Probably not. No, very thick texture. Yeah. Uh, but if you have, let's say, one voice or two voice texture, then you have all kinds of leaps and arpeggios and runs and yes. flourishes. But if we are talking about, like, you know, chorales, hymns, and you have two voices, bass and soprano, usually, no, if it's intended for uh, harmonization, it will have the numbers underneath of the bass. Or above the bass. Or above the bass. Step. Mm -hmm. So, and that way it will mean that you have to harmonize and to add two more voices. Exactly. So, look at the numbers. If you see the numbers above the baseline, then presumably you could add, a, uh, fill in the harmonies or even make a com complex version of the choral prelude by creating four part texture but not necessarily in chordal motion but making figurations and even imitations between the voices like in in uh, Orgelbuchlein yes that's right but that's the next level right uh, the first level would sh should be to add uh, the chordal texture always to simplify things wonderful um, do you think that mark uh, is referring to Italian music as as the choral music? I don't think so, that Italians didn't write that. Yes, yes, I don't think so either. So probably he um, played some Italian bicinniums, right? Where figuration and uh, filling in the harmonies is not necessary at sure, all. Sure, that's true. Because, you know, Bicinium technique was, you know, rather important technique in Baroque time. Even, you know, J.S. Bach included it in his, you know, clavier part, clavier rubing part three, 
where we have four wonderful duets. Exactly. And sometimes Bettiniums have uh, one voice uh, stationary, like a choral uh, melody in the right hand or in the left hand too. Um, or or you could have imitation and dialogues between each part, like in those du duets from the Klavierübung part three. I think we could make a fingering for those two. People sure. would enjoy them. Yes. Because they're not easy. They, they're like a full-blown two-part fugues. Yes, we are not easy. <laughs> Definitely. I agree with you. But they're, they have curious structure because uh, they, they have re repeated sections A and repeated sections B, like uh, ancient two-part forms. But I think, you know, that Bach wanted to, you know, to... To leave it to us, you know, as his part of his legacy, because this was one of those rare collections which was actually printed out during his lifetime, and it means that it's very important all those pieces that he included them in these printed out collections. Is it more important than Orgelbüchlein? I think so. I think so, because you know. <laughs> I'm still not quite sure about, you know, Orgelbüchlein. It seems for me that Bach got bored with it at some point because he didn't finish it and because it was not the end of his life, actually. But, but, but you know, sort of middle, I believe, or you know, even earlier age. So I I don't think that it's you know the same has the same weight as the Clavier Rubung Part Three, for example. Definitely Clavier Rubung Part Three. All other you know parts of Clavier Rubung. It's a complete collection, right? Part One uh, has partitas. Yes. Part Two is what uh, French overture yes. and Italian uh, concerto. Italian concerto, yes. So you have sort of all these various styles, you know, in in Clavier Rubungs. Part three is what orgel, organ, chorales, and E flat major, and prelude and fugue, and those and four duets. Yes. And what is in f part four? It's uh, Goldberg Variations, I believe. Aha, uh -huh. so Bach really wrote a um, compendium of every marriageable, imaginable uh, keyboard technique that he used at that time. So I believe that this, you know, four parts of Klavierübung and his art of fugue, fugue is, you know, are the most important pieces to, to study in order to understand Bach and Baroque music. Do you think, Osha, that if, if a person, like any of our listeners, would master those four parts, some of them are for the harpsichord, of course, mm -hmm or some of them for the organ, mm. uh, would they be able to play just about anything from the Brock times? Sure, definitely, yes. And you know, when praising these four parts of Klavierübung and Art of Hug, I don't want to sort of diminish the Orgelbüchlein. It's also a very important collection, especially for beginners, when you are just learning, you know, the Baroque language. Because it has all those, you know, important Baroque figures. Like each chorale is, you know, devoted to some some time of of technique, some time of, you know, Baroque figure. So it's very important too. Yeah, one figure goes throughout entire yes. chorale prelude in imitation. It's basically the second level of chorale writing. The first writing, the first level would be a harmonization of the chorale. The second level would be like uh, Orgelbüchlein type of chorale prelude. The third would be with added uh, ritornellos in between the phrases, and uh, the the next phrase, uh, the next level would be already very advanced. Yes, and to some of uh, his chorales from Orgel Buchlein, actually, he, you know, took them later on in his life. And even, I think, on his deathbed, he took that chorale when we in Höchste Noten sein and, you know, recomposed it with a different title, Von Deinem Thron. Exactly. For Deinem Trot, Thron tret ich... Here meet basically before your throne 
Here come, here I come. Yes, so it's like a final stage of his life. Mm -hmm. Although it was an early version, right, uh, from from early book. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful guys, please explore more of Bach's works, Bach choral preludes. They're wonderful, and Bitiniums are wonderful too. Um, you can learn so much. In fact, if you just master 15 two-part inventions and then 15 three-part symphonias, you will be able to play, to play a lot of Baroque music too. Yes. It's like, you know, Baroque ABC. Exactly. Thank you, guys. This was a wonderful question. We love helping you grow, so please send us more of like that. Uh, we will discuss that on the show and um, now we're going to play some Bach music because Bach's birthday is approaching soon and we'll be celebrating it and hopefully you will be celebrating as well um, and uh, remember when you practice miracles happen <laughs> 